Hi, I'm Scott, the Fix-It Guy. I've been working to improve the sound quality on my videos. Now, I'm not a sound engineer, so when I first started to read about digital sound and look at some of the software, I was mystified. I didn't understand anything, but I persisted and figured some things out. So I thought I'd make this video to help the person like me, who knows nothing about digital sound, is working in Microsoft Windows, and just needs a starting point of what to do to capture and manipulate it. I'll show you some no-cost software to get you going and how to configure and set that up. I'm going to keep this simple though. I'm not going to show you how to download and install it. That information is available on the websites. I will define a few terms as we go along which will help you understand maybe what you're reading or hearing on the topic. So let's go. The program I'm using to capture Windows Sound is VST Host. You can download that program from this web page. This is a fully functional, free download. Find the um, application that is right for your setup, and you can download that here. This is Donationware, which means that once you download it and you find you're using it and you like it, come back here and make a donation to the developer. The other program you will need is VB Cable. That can be downloaded from this web page. This too is a fully functional free program. It too is donationware. So you can come back to this page and make a donation if you find you're using it and you like it. So what does VST stand for? Visual Sound Technology. The VST software provides visual software control of digital sound. The VST software standard allows developers to create applications that will work together. Before you'll be able to follow along with the rest of this video, you'll need to download and install that software I showed you. Be aware that when you install VB Virtual Audio Cable, there really isn't an interface that you'll see. It has one, but you won't be opening it to use the virtual audio cable. When you open VST Host, this is what you're going to see. Now, I'm only going to describe the settings that you need to know to accomplish capturing the Windows sound output. The VST Host package does include a PDF user's manual that you'll want to read through when you have time. But be aware that if you're new to digital sound manipulation like I was, some of it isn't going to make sense until you learn more. This is all a little small. I'm going to enlarge it to full screen. And I will zoom in on these items in post-production to help you see what's going on here. First, I'll start by focusing on the menu items up top that we need to set for all this to work. The Devices menu is where we go first. We want to choose Wave. And we get a pop-up window with some drop-down list boxes. We have to set our input port. We open that list and you will see a whole bunch of choices here. What we're going to do is select the Cable Output VB Audio Virtual Cable. This is the other piece of software that you installed after watching the start of this video. We are selecting the Microsoft Multimedia Extension. Under Output Port, you want to select how you listen to your computer system. In my case, I am using headphones, so I'm going to select the Microsoft Multimedia Extension for headphones. You might be using speakers. If so, select speakers. I'm using headphones. The sample rate and buffers will automatically populate with default settings. Leave those where they are for now. If you want to learn more about that, you can read the PDF user's manual. Then select OK. Now we go to the engine menu. We want to select configure. 
the Assign Input Channel tab. Engine Channels, this should read minus 1. If it doesn't, click this down arrow until it does. By having this read minus 1, these fields down here automatically populate with the defaults which you just set under your device's WAVE menu. If it doesn't, open this up and select your Cable Output VB Virtual Audio Cable 1 and Cable Output VB Audio Virtual Cable 2. If you're not getting these readings here, then this is set wrong or you made a bad selection up under the Devices menu. So go back and reset your Devices menu. Assign Output Channels. The same thing goes here. This should read minus 1, and these will populate with your default settings that you selected under Devices for listening to your computer system. Priorities, Speed, OSC, these are all default settings. Leave them as they are. You don't need to make any changes to this. To learn more about all of these, you can read the PDF user's manual. Select OK to save everything. Now I'll talk about these two little windows up here. These are VST plugins. They load automatically when you start VST Host. VST Host comes with a few plugins and the Engine Input plugin and the Engine Output plugin are required for VST Host to operate. What is a plugin? A plugin is a small application that plugs into a larger application and provides some sort of added functionality to the larger app. The VST Host Input plugin should be connected to the VST Host Output plugin with this yellow line. If they're not, don't worry because I'm going to show you right now how that works. Realize that these little windows can be moved around on the screen. I like to arrange them like this with the input plug-in on the left, the output plug-in on the right. It shows a logical flow of sound data through the program. These little square icons are buttons, which will activate controls for each plug-in. Any that are grayed out are inactive or unavailable. Right now, the only one that matters is this one with the little chain link symbol on it. If you click it, we get this window. This window will list all the plugins that are loaded or opened in VST Host. There is only one other plugin loaded, so there's only one in the list, and that's the input plugin. This checkbox over here assigns a connection between plugins. If we uncheck this and select OK, you'll notice that the yellow line disappears between these two, which means they are no longer connected. We need them to be connected, so we check the box. Uh, and note that this slider should be at zero. This is the volume output through the plugin, so we want it at zero, which is normal full volume, okay? And then select OK. And the line between the two shows that these are connected. The basic VST host setup is now done. And now we have to make some adjustments to the Windows sound settings. Open the Windows settings menu. Select system. Click on sound. And under Choose Your Output Device, select Cable Input VB Audio Virtual Cable. This is that piece of software that we loaded, that you downloaded at the start of this video. Then you want to set the volume slider to 100% so that we're putting full volume through the cable and it is being sent to VST Host. And that's it. We are now ready to capture Windows sound output in VST Host. And I will show you an example of how that works. To show you how this works to capture and manipulate Windows sound output, using my default Windows Media Player, I'm going to play a file I downloaded from YouTube's music library. But this will work the same way regardless of how you're playing media through Windows. So whether it's some other music program 
or a video player or a web browser. It doesn't matter. It'll work the same way. Now, I just lowered the mix volume so you can hear me. Notice these sound bars? They're jumping. This shows that the music is flowing through VST Host. If I click this little button here, it opens a volume slider. And if I raise the slider, the volume gets louder of the music. If I lower the slider, the volume goes down. That shows that we can control the volume. Let me pause this. I will set the volume back to zero, close this, and I'm going to load another plugin. This is Ulean Loudness Meter. For it to work, we need to put it between the input plugin and the output plugin, and we need to change the linking so that the input plugin is linking to Ulean Loudness Meter, and then the loudness meter links to the output plugin. And you can see by the yellow line what our flow of sound is now. If I click this little button here on the loudness meter, it opens the Ulean loudness meter's interface. And you can see that this will provide lots of information about the decibel values of the sound file we're playing. I'm shrinking this down because we're just going to pay attention to the left side of this screen here. Now if I play the sound file, you'll see that all the input is passing through Ulean and you can capture a lot of that information here on this screen. If you want to download Ulean Loudness Meter, you can find it here on this web page. Now I'll show you how to capture the sound after it's modified by VST Host and the plugins. This little control section up here is a sound recorder built into VST Host. Typical functions, there's a record button, stop, fast forward, play, rewind, all those things. If I click the record button and then play the music, it will capture the output with whatever changes have been made in VST Host. I'll show you. I'll click the record button and then I will play this music file. I'll just mess around with the volume here as it's recording. All right. Let's pause the music and stop the recording. You can see I got a typical Windows pop-up box asking me if I want to save the recording. I will say yes, and I get a window asking me to name the file and choose a place to save it. I'm going to call it Sample 1 and hit Save in my default location. Now I will play that file back so you can hear how the recording took place. Realize that this is playing back through VST Host because that's how I have my computer sound set up. We'll play the file and you'll hear the changes. The volume's down when I put it down. And back up. Back down again. So you can see that it is a perfect copy of whatever I did in VST Host while the music was playing.
Now, this is just a simple example of capturing the Windows sound output and modifying it. But you can do a lot of advanced manipulations because there's hundreds of VST plugins available, either for free or for purchase. And they'll allow you to do things like filter sound, compress the sound, add reverb, add echo, generate tones, you name it. Now, like I said at the start, I'm not a sound engineer, so I worked out this simplified system, and I've made this video to try to help others with a limited sound engineering knowledge get started with capturing the Windows sound output. As always, I'm happy to hear what you think, so leave your comments below for everyone to read. Thanks for watching.